Hello nerds! Thank you for watching Generally Nerdy. This is your Week in Nerddom TV edition for the week of August 13th, 2018. This week in television news, we've got the Batwoman update that everyone is pissed off about. We're talking about Disney's streaming problem. We have Star Trek, American Horror Story, all the things happening in television. Now, let's set up an intro. Quiet on the set, rolling. Hi, I am Bitsy Tellick. Hey, I'm Hale Appleman. I'm Walter Kane. I'm Rene Auberginois. Odo on Deep Space Nine. Michael Dorn, Lieutenant Commander of War, Star Trek The Next Generation. Uh, come and see me and hear me and talk to me and listen to me and talk about myself. Hey man, this is Kevin Smith, often considered generally nerdy, and you are listening to what is often considered generally nerdy. On generally nerdy. You're listening to Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Generally Nerdy. Before we jump into the news, guys, we got to get through the sponsor. This week, just like the last few times we've done sponsors, is sponsored by Mercari and Poshmark. Uh, I'm probably going to keep pushing these until we clear a little bit more of our stuff out. We've been selling stuff, so the, the inventory has changed. But definitely go check out the links in the description. Uh, you're seeing images cycling through on the screen. Some of the things we have up on those uh, those sites, the, their apps, really. So Mercari and Poshmark, again, are our sponsors. Uh, and I was just informed by my beautiful girlfriend that if you mention the show, if you say that you heard about it on Generally Nerdy, then you will get an extra discount on top of what we're already really just giving stuff away. So go check it out. The links, again, are down in the description. And now let's jump into the news. First thing we're talking about this week on television is Batwoman. Uh, for anyone who has missed the announcement, which being as it was made during the week while I was in Salt Lake, it's not likely a lot of you watching this don't know already, but in case you don't, Ruby Rose, uh, the gender fluid model, is that right? Gender fluid, gay, something. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been hearing. Um, so Ruby Rose has been cast to play Batwoman. Um, personally, I think this is a fantastic casting choice. I feel like she is a good enough actor to pull it off. I don't think she's a fantastic actor by any stretch of the mean, any stretch of the imagination. I I don't think that obviously she's not a redhead. So like they're gonna have to dye her hair oh no but I, I think if you if you take into consideration the rest of the Berlanti verse if you take into consideration the acting chops of anyone in green Ar or in arrow I guess they don't put the green on the title so in arrow or flash or any of the Greg Berlanti shows on the CW supergirl uh, you can even talk about uh, black lightning there's no real big heavyweight actors in any of these shows, but they're still pretty good. Uh, Flash is probably the standout of the of the whole bit, but I haven't really watched Supergirl, so I can't say that 100%. But out of the show, the Berlanti shows I have seen, Flash is the biggest standout, and there's probably... Aside from the guy that was on uh, Ed back in the day, I don't remember his name, th there's no really good actors even he's a good actor but the rest of them are okay actors they're slightly above mediocre um but it's still enjoyable it's still entertaining so i feel like anyone who's 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 critical of this casting decision because ruby rose isn't the best freaking actor in the world is really just looking for things to be grumpy about um also i, I just you're you're looking for representation of a character. Batwoman is a gay superhero, uh, so why not have somebody who at least kind of identifies as such? Uh, again, I'm not a hundred percent as to Ruby Rose's uh, sexual preference or identity or whatever, but I do know enough to know that she's whatever that part's irrelevant too because she identifies in she identifies with the 
LGBTQ plus minus all this stuff. Uh, she identifies with that community. So that should be a win in and of itself. Apparently it's really not. People are still upset about this. Uh, but I, we're not going to get into the politics of this. What, what I find very interesting is that all of the promotion for this just keeps saying that she was cast for the crossover episode in Arrow. Not that she was cast for the series, which we know is happening. I would not be surprised if that's also the casting call, but I also wouldn't be surprised if they just did this as a one-off and then recast for the series itself. Um, I feel like the most likely thing is she's going to be playing Batwoman in the series as well. Uh, I just haven't seen anything say 100% that that's the case. That It's just 100% that she's going to be in the crossover episode. Um, also, randomly related to, uh, to this, not really randomly, but... Uh, Batman is not going to be happening in the Berlantiverse. Greg Berlanti and the production staff involved there have said that they have no plans on doing anything with Batman as a uh, in in this C uh, CW universe as as a, a guest character or even pursuing a Batman series. None of that is on the table or even on the back burner. Uh, we do have good reason to believe that Batman will be a secondary character in the Titans show because they made a casting call effectively for Batman, just didn't say Batman. Um, so that's very likely to happen there. But And that is also Greg Berlanti, but that's a different universe, which we talked about last time we talked television. So I just... I wanted to put it out there that I honestly think that Ruby Rose is a great casting choice. I feel like she will be a very believable in this universe Batwoman. And let's move on. Next up, we're talking about Disney and their streaming problems. Um, I don't think this is going to be a big problem for very long, but this is a, uh, at least a minor issue they're having right now. Uh, it would appear that Disney does not own the rights to the TV rights specifically to Star Wars, which means they're going to have some issues putting it on their streaming app when it when that comes out later this year. Um, currently, the Ted Turner Broadcasting Turner Broadcasting owns the rights. They bought the rights back in 2016 to Star Wars Television, and they bought the rights for eight years. So in 2000, until 2026, uh, I, that seems a little silly, don't you think? I, I, very likely, I feel like what's going to happen is they're going, they're, there's going to be some decision in the vein of, well, this is for streaming and this is for broadcast, and that's per perceivably what's what the split's going to end up being, or maybe Disney's just going to pay them back and then some uh, in order to get the TV rights because that's just, I <laughs> I don't know who sold those rights, but whoever it was, they're fired. And we're kicking on next. Next up, we are talking about Halo and it was uh, made known this past week at the Television Critics Association press event. That's a mouthful. Um, by the CEO of Showtime, President and CEO David Nevins, that the the Halo C, the series is going to be focused on Master Chief. So we're not going to be getting any of this is he, isn't he kind of stuff. It is going to be Master Chief, uh, John 117. Um, and I, I feel like that's probably in their best interest because let 343 Studios make the do the experimental stuff where they try to uh, veer away from Master Chief because they're the Halo games are just going to sell regardless. I mean, that's that's just kind of a given. Halo is a staple for Xbox fans and there's enough Xbox fans to keep the, that company in business and 343 is owned by them. So, you know so on and so forth. But the most success they have had in the past has been with Master Chief. Anytime they've tried to veer away, it's been met pretty harshly in sales and in criticism. So, and in, in just in general crit critic reviews, uh, it's never been a good thing. So why would Showtime take a gamble when they know what's gonna win? So that just seems 
pretty obvious. And we also, I don't remember if we've talked about the number of episodes. It's 10 episodes. I've, that sounded familiar. So I'm pretty sure we've talked about that in previous, in previous episodes on Generally Nerdy. But uh, the premiere date still is not set aside from being in the year 2020, which again, we already knew that. So let's kick on next. We're talking about Star Trek. Um, I again, was in Salt Lake and not really paying attention to the social medias for the last week. So when this got officially announced, I was a little confused once I finally started reading the news about it. Jean-Luc Picard is returning to Star Trek and from the sounds of it is going to be helming another ship and is obviously going to be played once again by Patrick Stewart. So all fantastic things. Now the bit that confused me was I thought this was an announcement that he was going to be on Star Trek Discovery. It wasn't. He's getting his own series on also on the CBS streaming app. So uh, it's going to be uh, just there's going to be two Star Trek shows on the CBS streaming app. So I'm super interested to see what they do with the aging Patrick Stewart and how Jean-Luc has has progressed in his career with Starfleet and how they're going to make this interesting aside from it just being a uh, uh, borderline octogenarian being awesome on screen because I mean let's face it Patrick Stewart rocks but I it's there's a lot of fantastic potential here. I just am not 100% convinced that they're going to capitalize on it. Um, either way, it's going to be worth watching for Patrick Stewart. So there is that. And then our last bit of news this week for television, guys, is American Horror Story. Minor updates, but still updates. Uh, the first one being that FX just signed on for season 10, so we are signed out two seasons out. So, very awesome. Uh, it sounds, from what I've seen, and actually there was a direct quote, and I'm not going to be able to quote it, but I'll paraphrase it. The studio heads over at FX have said that pretty much if uh, Brad, Brad Falchuk, Brian, Brad, I'm pretty sure it's Brad, if he wants to do another one, we're going to let him do another one. So it sounds like he wanted to go to season 10. So they're like, all right, cool. Let's sign the contracts because you've been making us all kinds of money. Uh, so yeah, so that's pretty interesting. It, it's very, it, I don't know how much longer this season, this series can run, but I feel like 10 uh, seasons is a good round number. Seinfeld went out in 10. Friends went out in 10. So maybe 10 is going to be the end. Maybe 9 and 10 are going to be more that like we're going to get in season 8. Uh, more tying up all of the other seasons together. We won't know until they happen. But it's fun to dream. Anyway, <laughs> the other thing that uh, we're talking about for American Horror Story is the announcement this past week that Jessica Lange is in fact returning to this season, season eight. So it that's a pretty, I, they haven't been in production for that long, so maybe it's not the best kept secret, but still pretty well kept. Um, none of the social media posts have really hinted at that, though we do know that this is bringing together two seasons uh, the storylines from two seasons that she was a part of, so it's not a crazy stretch to have to think that somebody might have guessed this was going to happen. But I just didn't necessarily see it happening. I thought maybe they were going to reference the character and not show the character. She's going to be there, and potentially both characters that she was in these seasons, because this is one of the craziest shows on television. That is not outside of the realm of possibility, but... Pretty awesome, and uh, September 12th is going to be the premiere date, so if you miss it, I'm sure you can Hulu that or whatever streaming service you have, or if it's a streaming service, then I, I feel like I feel like if you can stomach the politics, or if they're if they align with your politics, then this is definitely a show that you should not miss because it even. Even as campy as it can be, there's still definitely an element of actual horror in this series. It's one of the few TV horror series that can do that, so it's worth a watch. 
check it out September 12th when it airs. And that, guys, is where we are ending television this week. Thank you very, very much for watching all the way to the end. What did I miss? What should we talk about next week? Let me know in the comments down below. If, though, you want to go deeper in the conversation, jump over to the website, generallynerdy.net. That is the place that you can go get all of the freebies, all the social media links, all of the nerdy swag links. You can go buy your General Lee Nerdy shirt up on the website, generallynerdy.net. Go check it out. Or you can support the channel more directly by going to patreon.com slash generallynerdy. That's the Patreon page. And it, I mean, you get for just a dollar, you get so much more content. So go check it out. There's four different tiers. You get more content the higher you go up on those tiers. So again, patreon.com slash generally nerdy. If you are new to the channel, please click that subscribe button. If you like this episode, click the like button. If you are falling behind on your nerd news and you want to catch up, click or tap that box right there to the left of my face to do that. But before we go, guys, always, always remember, if it's generally nerdy, it's probably here.